So let's go to this um, example. So let's see what happens when we're solving some equations. So let's go through and, and use our, <clears throat> our skills. We want to use the distributive property first. So that gives me negative 5x minus 10, and I'm recopying the plus 5x equals 6. And then we're supposed to combine like terms. And I see here that we have negative 5x and positive 5x. So what happens when you add a negative 5x and a positive 5x? So a negative 5x and a positive 5x, doesn't that give you no x's? So the x's drop out and you have no x's, so we end up with just a negative 10 equals 6. And that's not a true sentence. Negative 10 doesn't equal 6. So we say what happens is, case number one, if you have a variable that drops out, see, we don't have a variable anymore. There's The variable's gone, right? No more variable. It dropped out because a negative 5x and a positive 5x gives you no x's. So we don't have any x's anymore. We just have constants. So when that happens and you get a false statement, Negative 10 is not equal to 6. That's not true. So when that happens, that means it's a no solution situation, right? And you don't have to write both. You can write either one, right? So that's what that means when the variable drops out. And then let's look at case 2. So case 2 is the second one. So we're going to use the distributive property. Remember, that's like a negative 1, so we're going to multiply negative 1. So we have to recopy the x that was in front of there. Negative 1 times 3x is negative 3x. Negative 1 times negative 4 is positive 4. And then i got to recopy the plus 2x, and it equals 4. And then I need to combine like terms. So I have a positive x, a negative 3x, and a positive 2x. And when you... Combine like terms, that would be 1x, negative 3x's, and 2x's. And when you combine those, that gives you 2 plus 1 is 3, and a negative 3, that would be 0x's. So that means our x's drop out because we end up getting 0x's. So all we have left is a 4 and then equals a 4. So we have a situation where the variable drops out, so there's no more variable. And we have a true sentence. This is true. So when that special case happens, so these are special cases. When the variable drops out and you have like zero x's, the variable drops out and you get a true statement, that means it's going to be all real numbers because it's the identity. And so our final answer has to be all real numbers. Or if you want, you can write the fancy r for all real numbers. Right, So sometimes that happens where you get a situation that there isn't any number that's going to make that true or any number in the world is going to make it true. No matter what you plug into this original equation for x, you're always going to get a true sta statement. Right, So those are the special cases. So when the variables drop out and you get a false sentence, that means it's no solution. And when the variable drops out and you get a true statement, that means it's all real numbers. So let's look at the next one. We need to use a distributed property. So remember when you're multiplying by one half, you're just cutting something in two. So that's gonna give us a negative because negative times positive is a negative one X because half of two is just one. And then a negative times a positive is a negative and half of 20 is 10. And then we gotta undo because we don't have any like terms. So there are no like terms. So there's nothing to combine. I cannot combine these terms. They're like each other, but I can't combine them because they're not on the same side. So I can only, so they are like terms, but I can't combine them because they have, they're not on the same side. So only when they're on the same side can you combine them. So I need to undo 
the subtracting 10 by adding 10. And then I can undo the multiplying by negative 1 by dividing by negative 1. So here my variable didn't drop out, so I actually have an answer. So this isn't a special case. It's not a no solution. It's not an all real number situation. It's just, it actually has an answer. Negative 11 would make the sentence true. So that one wasn't a special case, and it actually had an answer. Let's look at the next one. We've got to distribute negative 6 times x and negative 6 times negative 2. Remember, we're multiplying those, and that would give us 14 equals, and then 2 negative 6 times x is negative 6x. Negative 6 times a negative 2 is a positive 12. And then we should combine like terms if there are terms on the same side that are like each other. And we have, sorry, I meant to use highlighter. We have a positive, positive 2 and a positive 12. And so we can combine those. So I've got 14 equals 14 minus 6x because I combined these two terms because they were like terms. doesn't matter which one you put first. You could put the negative 6x plus 14 either way. And then I'm going to undo the 14 by subtracting 14. That gives me 0 equals negative 6x. Don't forget to recopy that negative in front of there. And then I'm going to undo multiplication. Right? Then we're going to undo multiplication by dividing by negative 6. And that gives me 0 divided by anything is 0. So once again, the variable did not drop out. I did, the variable did not drop out, so we actually have an answer, and the answer happens to be x equals 0. So in example 2, we had a situation where the variable actually dropped out, and we ended up with a true sentence, so it's all real numbers. In example 1, we had a situation where the variable dropped out, <clears throat> and we ended up with a false statement. Right? This is not true. This is a false statement. So therefore, that was no solution. So those are our two special cases. Okay, today we're going to look at special, special cases. So looking at problem number one, and then we'll look at problem number two. What number could you replace x with to make a true statement? Like, what if we replaced x with 3? Would that make a true statement? So 3 plus 6, does that equal... 3 plus 2? No, 9 doesn't equal 5, so that doesn't make a true statement. What else could we try? Can you find a number that would actually make that a true sentence? What about x equals 7? 7 plus 6, does that equal 7 plus 2? And that's 13 equals 9. No, that's not true, so... Seven's not the solution. Doesn't make it true. That's not a solution. And we could keep guessing and checking and guessing and checking, but what do you think? Do you think you could find something to replace X with that would make a true statement? Yeah, you'd probably say no, because you'd probably say, well, if I'm adding the same number, so whatever X is, I'm adding different numbers. So one time I'm adding a 6, and the other time I'm adding a 2. So how could I take the same number and add something different but still get the same answer? So there isn't anything that's going to work. So we say there is no solution. We say there is no solution. And you can draw the little circle with the slash through it. Be careful. Don't get confused. This is a 0. And this little zero with the slash is a no solution symbol. So never use the no solution symbol for the number zero. So there isn't anything that's going to work. So we say there's no number that we could replace x with to make a true sentence. No solution. What about number two? What could you place x with that would make a true statement? I don't know. Let's try four. Four plus five equals four plus five. Is that a true statement? Yeah, because you get 9 on both sides. So 4 is a solution. So 4 is the answer. But is that the only solution? Are there any other solutions? 
You think there's more? What about x equals negative 3? If I put a negative 3 where every single x is, will that make a true sentence? That gives me 2 on this side, and I get 2 on this side. Yeah, that's true. So that's a solution, too. What about x equals 0? Does that work? Let's see what happens when we place x with 0. 0 plus 5. Does that equal 0 plus 5 when I replace x both times with 0? Yeah, I get 5 and 5. So that's a solution. So what do you think is going to happen? You, I mean, am I ever going to find one that doesn't work? And you're probably saying, well, no, Mrs. Whip, that's, it, no matter what you pick, it's always going to work. Because you're taking the same number, right? You're taking the same number and you're adding the same number. So obviously that's going to work every single time. So every number that, you, every number is going to work. So every number on the number line is going to make a true sentence, and we say that's all real numbers. And sometimes we write a little fancy R to represent all real numbers. Sometimes we use this fancy set notation, right, to say all real numbers, and this is, this is called an identity. Right, if you take the same number and you add the same number to it, obviously it's going to be the same. So let's look at what happens in when you're solving equations.